the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it. Salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. Good morning everybody and a very warm welcome to you all from Trinity Methodist Church in Chelmsford for all of you out there, your families and friends and people who are joining us this morning on YouTube. I'm Heather Simmons, the student minister and yes, you are in the right place and we will be seeing Reverend Mark Pengeli a little bit later on for our reflection. But in the meantime, I do hope that you enjoy the worship that I'm going to lead for you this morning. One of these wonderful traditions of this season is the lighting of the Advent candle. And I'm going to hand you over to Ramona to do that now. Light the Advent candle one, shining brightly as the sun. We are watching for the Lord. We believe and trust his, his word. Light the Advent candle one, shining brightly as the sun. So what's our service going to be about today? Well, let me just say that I've been joining you for the last few weeks and really enjoyed the quiet, peaceful reflections that have given us so much to think about. And I really hope that that tradition will carry on. But today we're going to do something a little bit different. And the reason we're going to do something a little bit different is because later on we're going to be hearing the Bible reading from Mark's Gospel. And Mark was a little bit different. So let me tell you a little bit about Mark. Mark would have spent a bit of time with Jesus, um, but most of his work, most of his time was spent with particularly three of Jesus' closest people in his group, one particularly being Peter. So Mark was a kind of young reporter translator for Peter. And as we all know, or perhaps maybe we don't all know, and maybe this is a time where we learn together this morning, that Peter was the action man of the Bible. He was the one that wanted to um, witness everything that Jesus did. Of course, he was concerned with the word, but it was more about his miracles, how Jesus got out into the community and healed. So I want us to think in our service today a little bit differently. I want us to have that breathless excitement that is portrayed in Mark's gospel throughout this service. So are we ready? Are we ready on this first Sunday in Advent to welcome the King, our Saviour, into our homes? Would we be ready if he walked in today? Would we be ready if a tiny little vulnerable baby, completely dependent on us, was coming to us this Christmas? Would we be ready? Now, while we think on that, rather than play some quiet, gentle music, I'm going to embrace um, what we were talking about with Mark's gospel, this breathless excitement. So what I would like us all to do together is I'd like us to either stand up now, if you are able, or I invite you just to sit forward on your chair, spine nice and straight, and we're going to take some deep breaths in and we're going to breathe in the Holy Spirit right to our bones as we listen to a reading of Psalm 80. And I hope that you will think about this wonderful welcome and the words that I'm saying as we go through it. Let us take a deep breath in together as we listen to Psalm 80. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth 
before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbours. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call on your name. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. And now we come to our prayers of assurance and confession. And keeping with that active physical part of the worship from Mark, I would like us to do some actions together in this prayer if you feel comfortable. Let us pray. Loving Jesus, we are sorry our hearts are hard, O oh God. We know you will soften them with your love. We are sorry our hands are clenched and not ready to do your work. We know that you will open them with your grace. We are sorry our eyes are tightly shut. We know you will awaken them to see your amazing creation. We are sorry that our feet are stuck, not ready to walk in your shoes. We know that you will fill us with the Spirit and dance in your name. Saviour God, as we approach you this morning, bless and sustain us in doing this, in this time of preparation of Advent, the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now very happy to welcome Deacon Ramona Samuels to read the Gospel reading. The reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of Mark chapter 13 verse 24 to verse 37. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be fallen from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his word, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep 
when you come suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I've been thinking what kind of music we might like today as part of this service. And while I was giving it some thought with the theme of keeping awake and being prepared, I couldn't help but think about the Temptations song, Get Ready Cause Here I Come. And of course we can't play the direct, the Temptations because of copyright. So my husband and I, Dave and I are going to um, perform for you um, the song with a little tweak on the lyrics to make it more appropriate. But I just had this feeling, I start to sing, I never met a guy that made me feel the way that you do, meaning Jesus. And then Dave takes over as Jesus, which he felt slightly uncomfortable about. Um, and to um, sing from his point of view, um, look out baby, because here I come. Uh, so I hope you enjoy our version of this. And if you know the song, please join in with us. you do. I am the light to be five Look at baby cause here I go. When I'm bringing you a love is true so get ready. Look at ready. I'm gonna try to make you love me too so get ready. Look at ready cause here I come. I'm on my way. come to the part of the service where I'd like to invite Reverend Mark Pengeli for the reflection. Thank you Heather. What a great rendition of Get Ready because here I come and as Heather has said that's very much what we're focusing on this morning and it's what our Bible reading challenges us to do. Jesus paints the picture of a master going away, servants being left in charge, who must be ready for his return. If you've been watching The Crown, you'll know that whenever the Queen turns up, people need to be ready and waiting to greet her. I don't know if you're good at getting ready. We're in our period of preparation and preparing ourselves 
in the life of the church that we call Advent. Preparing for what? Well, Christmas, of course. Our Advent candle lighting reminded us that we're on the countdown for Christmas. We'll light a different extra candle each week. Perhaps on the 1st of December, you'll be opening an Advent calendar each day in December as well. Broomfield Methodist have got Advent children's bags that are going out to many and that offers an activity for each day. The business of being prepared is happening well with so many people who are getting ready for Christmas. I don't know if you're very good at being prepared. I'm perhaps not as good as I should be. But it was drummed into me when I was a Cub Scout. And every Tuesday when we went to Cubs, I used to have to have my Cub Scout pack with me. And in the pack, there were two essential items that if we didn't have them, we were in trouble. The first was a piece of string, ready for any repair that might come our way. I don't ever remember using it. The other essential item was a 2p piece and if we got these two they reckoned we were prepared. Be prepared is the scout motto of course. If you're young you might be wondering what you could do with 2p. <laughs> Showing my age now but back when I was young there was this strange device called a payphone and in an emergency 2p was enough to make an emergency phone call. So that's why we carried it. It did remind me of the importance of being prepared. And Jesus emphasized the same thing. As he paints the picture of the master who needs to have servants who are ready and waiting, they must be prepared, they mustn't go to sleep, they must be ready. In Advent, we talk about preparing ourselves for Jesus, not just remembering his birth and his coming to earth in physical form, but we remember spiritually that Jesus comes to us now. We need to be ready. I pray that you will find this Advent time a time of preparation being prepared, not being asleep, but being watchful and waiting, looking for Christ's love in our world. Are you ready? Let's be prepared. Let's greet Christ where we find him, in our neighbours, on our streets, in our world. God bless you as you prepare for the coming of Christ into our world this Advent. Amen. Now we come to our prayers of intercession where we pray for others. I'm going to start this prayer with a prayer by Walter Brugman and then we will continue with silence where you can bring to mind people who are very close to your heart or people across the world who most need God's love at this time. Let us pray. In our secret yearnings, we wait for your coming. And in our grinding despair, we doubt that you will. And in this privileged place, we are surrounded by witnesses who yearn more than do we, and by those who despair more deeply than do we. Look upon your church and its pastors in this season of hope, which runs so quickly to fatigue, and this season of yearning, which becomes so easily quarrelsome, 
Give us the grace and the impatience to wait for your coming to the bottom of our toes and to the edge of our fingertips. We do not want our several worlds to end. Come in your power and come in your weakness in any case and make all things new. Amen. Precious Jesus, may you hold in your heart all those people that each one of us has prayed for today. Amen. Usually we would say the Lord's Prayer together. But today I'd like to share um, Mahalia Jackson singing the Lord's Prayer. And I've chosen to do this today because she sings the Lord's Prayer, as I've said before, with the Holy Spirit coming right into her bones. It's, it, well, I find it incredibly moving and I hope you will too. Lord, 
As we've spent this service preparing and getting ready, I think it's now time to say in song, here I am to worship, here I am to bow down. Let's sing together, light of the world, you stepped down into the darkness, opened my eyes and let me see. If you would like to look at Singing the Faith, it's number 175 in your hymn books if you have one at home. Step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to work. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven. for joining us this morning. We hope you have um, enjoyed and embraced the worship that we have prepared for you. And we look forward to seeing you again on YouTube next week. God bless. And now for the blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. 
and scatter the darkness from before you. Go in peace, awake and prepared to love and serve the Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen.